Schultz. Thank you. Well, I don't know about funny. I'm the funniest guy at the Globe and Mail. That's kind of like being the classiest guy who ever took a paternity test on the Maury Povich show. Always good to start with a fine sound system. <laughs> yeah, I got a book coming out on September 29th, Hockey Fight in Canada, How the CBC Lost Hockey Night in Canada, and How Rogers Got It and Beat TSN for it, or Bell Canada, and all the shenanigans that uh, went on with that. You can get it on Amazon.ca or Indigo.ca in uh, about a week or so, I think, 10 days. I'm not sure about that. But uh, I want to thank Toronto Mike here for having me. You might know him as the guy with the unhealthy obsession with Ann Romer, right? He's in here. So I, I know, Mike, is it, uh, is it the, the news reading or the aerobics? I don't, I don't know. But either way, he's going to talk. He'll, he'll have the story of her next six retirements. So he'll be all over that. Now, I see we have a young fella here in the back. I looked a minute ago, he had a set of headphones on. I kind of recommend putting them back on there. Because if you think I'm bad, wait till Gary Joyce gets up here with his stuff. But, I oh, Toronto Mike, I just remember, you went viral a couple weeks ago, right? When you ran the picture of the Byway shopping bag? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was quite a thing. Mike's always had a soft spot for Byway. That's where he got started on his wardrobe. You know, I think he really misses Byway, but I see he's replaced it with Value Village. So. <laughs> yes. Now you can take a tip from me and my wardrobe. You know, for the really formal occasions, there's still Giant Tiger. So we're all right there. But the reason I get on Mike so much is I'm jealous. He's so much younger than me. I mean, I'm a generation older than Mike, so old I can actually put my phone away for 10 minutes at a time. And that leads to other problems too. Somebody was telling me the other day, he said, you know, your sets are getting as creaky as you are. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, there's not enough sex in them. I said, well, there's a reason for that. When you look at me, how many hours is it before hot sex comes to mind, eh? I mean, not that I could be a great, great expert on hot sex. Uh, I've been married 32 years. No, 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 no. No applause, please. In this country, if I'd killed somebody, I'd have been paroled seven years ago. But 32 years, you know, I don't know. The only thing that stiffens up on me regularly is my back. And after 32 years, when you get to the height of passion, or as I know it, the last three seconds before I finally get to fall asleep, your wife's just as likely to say something like, uh, do you remember that dentist appointment for me today? Yeah, that's as close to serious drilling as I ever get. It's <laughs> probably why she asked me the other night if I still masturbate. Now, the bed was shaking at the time, and it woke her up. <laughs> but I thought she deserved an honest answer, you know? I mean, I thought, okay, I'll bet even you young guys would have said the same thing. Because, you know, I think sex is a lot like driving. Now, sometimes it's just better by yourself, <laughs> you know? There's nobody next to you talking all the time. Telling you you're doing it wrong? Yeah, slow down! Not there! Jeez, if you don't know where you're going, why don't you stop and ask for directions? You know, but sometimes I, you know, I do make the effort. Like, not long ago, my wife told me she was going home to England for a couple weeks to visit her sister. So I thought, okay, it'd be, this would be a good time to surprise her. I'll paint the bathroom before she gets back. Now, pro tip for all you young guys here. Forget wine, roses, you know, any number of fancy dinners. When you've been married as long as I have, 
nothing gets you laid faster than paint in the bathroom. <laughs> and I went the whole nine yards, too. I went and bought a new light fixture. Yeah, because I'm thinking the ever-elusive BJ might be part of this deal. But as it turned out, considering what I spent on the paint and the light fixture, I'd have been better off going to the rub and tug. <laughs> At least there I would have got a massage. But, oh well. It, uh, it's stuff like that that had me thinking the other day, you know, I really should clean up my act. And I was, this occurred to me when I was on a trip for my day job. So I thought, well, there's no time like the present. So when I was checking into the hotel, I said to the desk clerk, uh, you know, I really hope the porn channel in my room is disabled. And she said, no, sir, you sick bastard. It's regular porn. <laughs> now, something else that happens when you get old there's a lot of things bug you, you know, like I was man, I'm jealous of Mike. Something else that bugs me a lot are hipsters. This might be risky saying this at a craft brewery get-together, I know. <laughs> so if somebody rushes the stage, I guess I'll know, right? And normally, hipsters are a group that I just wouldn't give a shit about, but daughter's boyfriend is one. And he was telling me not long ago, he's turning the spare room at their house into a man cave. Yeah, hipster man cave. God, give me strength. <laughs> so I went over there and I found out how much man caves have changed since my day. Like, back when I was building man caves, if you had a trophy that you got from the sports team along the way, like the one I got when I was nine years old, and my softball team won some championship, that got pride of place in your man cave. So I go over there and this guy's got the walls lined with trophies. Just every wall and I'm finally impressed. I thought, oh, maybe he's not a hipster doofus. Redundant, I know. <laughs> and then I took a closer look. Yeah every participation trophy the little snowflake ever got. <laughs> now something else a man cave requires are snacks, right? So, yeah, that's when I found out how much snacks have changed since my day, because we used to have all the food groups covered. Potato chips, peanuts, pepperoni sticks. So I read, okay, I took over a man cave warming gift, and I took over some dip. Not just any dip either, the good stuff. Craft, right? <laughs> then I found out about hipster snacks. You ever tried to drag a kale chip through the craft? Whoa, lasts about as long as a hipster in a biker bar. <laughs> and of course, every man cave's got to have a beer fridge. And sure enough, he's got one. Only because he's a hipster, it's full of Pabst Blue Ribbon. And I said, look, I know with you hipsters, it's all about irony but you're still asking me to drink goat piss. And he goes, no, 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 no. He says, I got the good stuff. And he bends down, he opens the drawer. Yeah, you guessed it, pumpkin spice ale. <laughs> I said, dude, Donald Trump wouldn't drink this stuff if it came straight out of a Russian hooker. Now, <laughs> uh, as I, I uh, go through life, there are certain things my wife just refuses to recognize. Aside from painting the bathroom. but uh, <laughs> um, And one of them is the last drop rule. Now, I can see that doesn't ring a bell here, but I'll bet $1,000 every one of you guys in here. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Pumpkin spice <laughs> oh, All right. Yes. This is going straight to the hipster man cave. <laughs> Oops. So, where was I? Oh yes, the last drop rule. But every one of you guys in here, if you live with somebody, you live by that rule. Because that's the rule that says, when you get down to the bottom of the milk or the juice container, no matter how infinitesimally small that last drop is, as long as you can still see it, 
You got the right to put that thing back in the fridge. <laughs> now, something I've always tried to avoid in my comedy, yeah, I know, aside from being funny, <laughs> is politics. Because you just can't win. But seeing as how we went and gave up the moral high ground on Donald Trump by electing Doug Ford and his merry band of hillbillies, and I know I'm standing in the middle of Doug Ford country, but we'll risk it. What the hell? There's a better chance of hipsters being here. Being the... oh. But, you know, some of the shenanigans they've been up to, I, I just can't resist anymore. Like, yeah, it was about a month or so ago, the community safety minister, a fellow named Michael Tibolo, he very proudly said he wore a bulletproof vest when he went on a ride around with the cops at Jane and Finch. And of course, there was the predictable uproar. Well, I think we're being a little tough on Mr. Tiblo. I mean, he is the MPP for Vaughn Woodbridge. And if you've been reading the news in the last four or five years, you know, in certain cafes and restaurants, the bulletproof vest is pretty much compulsory attire. Or as they call it up there, the Woodbridge dinner jacket. <laughs> but I suppose by now you've all had time to absorb Doug Ford's biggest move, and no, I'm not talking about the current crisis with Toronto City Council. I'm talking about the sex education, turning the curriculum, what, back to 1998? Well, I'm, I gotta admit, I'm pretty torn on this one. I'm sure it's terrible for the kids. I have no doubt about that. But for me personally, I wouldn't mind turning the old sexual clock back to 1998. <laughs> My last good year. Yeah. I'd even take a snitch line. <laughs> but I painted a lot of bathrooms that year, let me tell you. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm David Schultz.